one day, you might experiment with entheogenic compounds. After waiting longer than you would expect, the world might begin to look a little different. The world might begin to feel a little different. You might feel a little different. Then you might close your eyes. Psychedelic geometry is one of the most iconic effects of classical psychedelics. Almost every serotonergic psychedelic can induce an experience of seeing some kind of colorful patterns, shapes, swirls, phosphenes, or fractals, which can become indescribably complex. These patterns will move, shift, and morph constantly, fluctuating throughout a psychedelic trip. This effect is one of the most significant visual effects in psychedelia, both significant to the experience and significant in how it has influenced culture and art. Describing a design as psychedelic usually implies that it has some similarity with psychedelic geometry, something colorful, abstract, and visually dense. The psychedelic art movement originating in the 60s carries an aesthetic highly influenced by psychedelic visuals, especially geometry. The earliest known art depicting replications of any psychedelic visuals are the textiles from the Shipibo Kanibo tribe, who were inspired by their traditional ayahuasca practices, and these textiles look remarkably similar to some psychedelic geometry. When movies, TV shows, and video games depict psychedelic experiences, some kind of shifting, colorful patterning is very common, and it can even resemble psychedelic geometry very closely in some cases. In the psychedelic or visionary art community of the present, a key characteristic of the style is prominent featuring of complex and beautiful psychedelic geometry. This video is part of our ongoing series on visual subjective effects with the world-class replicator LocaVision. Here we will go into what geometry is, how it can interact with a psychedelic trip, and our hypotheses for how this effect is created. What is psychedelic geometry? First, some background. The visual effects of psychedelics can broadly be thought of as creative and uncreative. Uncreative visual effects take what we can see with our eyes open and alter them, but do not create anything entirely new. If you've seen our recent video on visual drifting, when the things you can see start to shift, move, melt, or breathe, this is an example of an uncreative visual effect, a distortion of what you can see. Other examples of uncreative effects are visual acuity enhancement, color shifting, tracers, and symmetrical texture repetition. These effects alter your visual perception, sometimes very significantly, but there isn't anything completely new being added. On the other side of things, creative visual effects create new visual content. These are the effects that can be seen even if your eyes are closed and you aren't receiving any visual information from the external environment. Hallucinations are the classic example of a creative visual effect, seeing something that isn't there, or at least isn't there in any measurable way, like an entity, or seeing a bush transform into a cat. Geometry, however, is different from hallucinations. In art, there is a concept of something being representational or abstract. Representational art is art that attempts to represent something that can be recognizable, like an object, a character, or a place. Purely abstract art, on the other hand, does not strive to represent anything identifiable. The way we look at it, for the most part, representational creative visual effects are types of hallucinations. Abstract creative psychedelic visual effects are types of geometry. We'll get into the different forms these visuals can take in our hypotheses, 
but we will begin as we often begin with the levels of intensity. Level one. At level one, geometry is subtle with eyes open. It may look like a fractaling shimmeriness projected over the outside world or patterning over certain textures when you look for it and may disappear and return depending on the environment and where you rest your eyes. With eyes closed, some shapes and patterns will be seen in the darkness behind your eyelids. Level two. At level two, geometry is distinct and tends not to disappear. It will be seen more clearly as shapes and patterns and be more present regardless of where you look, though particularly in darker places for the same reason that it's more visible with eyes closed. There's less visual stimulation competing for your mind's attention. With eyes closed, the geometry will be more immediately apparent and take up more of the space in the darkness. The patterns, shapes, and colors will also tend to be more clear, distinct, and bright. Level three. At level three, geometry will begin to obscure some of your vision with eyes open, particularly in spaces that aren't very bright. The geometry will often be the most prominent thing you can see, commingling with everything around you. Though you will still be able to visually understand your environment without much difficulty, provided that there is sufficient light illuminating the space. With eyes closed, the geometry will take up virtually all of your visual field and will typically be more complex and detailed. Level four. At level four, the geometry will obscure your vision with eyes open. And in many cases, at this level of extreme psychedelic experience, you will have a natural urge to close your eyes. With eyes closed, the geometry will be all encompassing in your visual field. It may feel like a space that completely surrounds you or an ineffable fact of the universe. Types of geometry. The way psychedelic geometry looks can vary dramatically depending on the person, the substance, and the situation. While geometry is more likely to be complex in higher intensities, various styles of presentation can occur at any intensity level. Here are some broad stylistic variations that geometry can have and different styles can meld together in unexpected ways. Simple versus complex. Geometry can be very simple and easy to understand in its shapes, patterns, and movements, or it can be very complex. Complex geometry may have layering components that could never make sense in the physical world, intricate and detailed fractals that are difficult to bring back from the experience, and dizzying combinations of colors. Structured versus unstructured. Geometry can present in structured patterns with symmetry, repeating elements, and semi-predictable movements and flow, or may be unstructured and chaotic, both in its design and movement. Sharp versus soft edges. The shapes in geometry can have sharp, defined edges, sometimes with thick black outlines around their edges or other high contrast looks. Or the shapes can be soft and blurred around the edges, merging seamlessly into each other. Angled versus fluid shapes. The shapes in geometry can be sharply angled with mostly straight sides, or can primarily comprise fluid or rounded shapes. Color saturation. While geometry is nearly always colorful, the colors can be unfathomably bright and saturated or relatively dark and desaturated. This seems to be particularly affected by the substance. For example, NN-dimethyltryptamine tends to produce some of the brightest and most vivid colors, while psilocybin geometry tends to be more muted and earthy in its colors. Dimensionality. Geometry can appear as a flat image of shapes, patterns, and color, or can appear to be three-dimensional. The dimensionality can especially affect the movements of the geometry. For example, three-dimensional geometry can move forward and backward or twist and rotate in the air, sometimes with multiple components moving through and intersecting with each other in ways that don't seem to comply with three-dimensional space. Geometry may even appear to be four-dimensional or hyper-dimensional in its presentation. Substance influence on geometry. While it can vary person to person and situation to situation, different substances typically produce different styles of geometry in some respects. For a video that we had planned about LSD versus psilocybin, which we have unfortunately shelved for the moment, Josie and I pulled her audience on the relative presentation of geometry in LSD versus psilocybin. These polls were made on YouTube and Reddit and got thousands of responses. In all cases of these answers, there were people who experienced both of these substances that had a different effect than others, but these were by far the most popular answers. For sharp versus soft edges, 
the majority of respondents found LSD geometry to be sharper and more well-defined, while psilocybin geometry was considered to be softer and blurrier. For angular versus fluid shapes, the majority of respondents found LSD geometry to be more angular and geometric, and psilocybin more soft and round. In terms of color saturation, the majority of respondents found LSD to be more vividly bright and colorful than psilocybin. We already knew from personal experience and conversations with other psychonauts that geometry can look different on different substances, but it's been great to put some polling numbers to some of these variations for at least two substances. Another factor we did ask about in terms of the geometry on LSD and psilocybin was whether they look or feel more synthetic and digital or natural and organic. This answer was closer to unanimous than the others, that LSD visuals are more synthetic and digital, while psilocybin is more natural and organic. This result might indicate that people are somewhat influenced by their perception of the substance itself, that something that's known to come out of a lab is more synthetic than something known to grow from the earth. While people might differ on their idea of what looks synthetic versus natural, the other visual differences we asked about without bringing synthetic versus natural into the equation supported at least what we think of as the differences between synthetic and natural visual styles. There's still a lot to learn regarding the differences in visual effects for different substances. Intersections with other effects. Symmetrical texture repetition. Symmetrical texture repetition is itself an uncreative visual effect, where things you can see in the external environment have their texture or shapes repeated and mirrored. The resulting effect can have a lot in common with geometry, or can even act something like a nucleation point around which geometry can form and intensify. In some cases, where symmetrical texture repetition ends and geometry begins can be a little nebulous. Hallucinations. Hallucinations and geometry can intersect with each other very closely. Psychedelic hallucinations are often essentially made of geometry, representational forms composed entirely of shifting, intricate patterns. If we go back to our representational versus abstract distinction, these two ideas can intersect as well. The umbrella of abstract art often includes identifiable subjects represented in non-literal ways, with shapes and colors that are not present in the world around us. However, there are also some cases where geometry can be made of hallucinations, typically in cases where some representational visual gets duplicated and arranged in a way that creates an abstract pattern. Synesthesia. Synesthesia is the experience of one kind of sensory or cognitive stimulation causing an unrelated sensation or feeling. For example, someone might feel a design they're seeing as a tactile sensation, or hear the taste of food as music. People who experience synesthesia in everyday life will often have a distinct feeling that the concept of individual numbers have colors inextricably connected to them. We'll get more in-depth into possible connections between synesthesia and geometry later in the video, but one very common experience of psychedelic synesthesia is for music to be translated into geometry in closed-eye visuals, such that the form and movement of the geometry relates directly to a song you are hearing. This can be an incredibly profound and beautiful experience, as the music can also induce powerful emotional or introspective states. Between hearing the music, the geometry visualizing the experience, and the emotional effect of the music, nearly everything about that moment can be beautifully immersed in a unified experience spanning several dimensions of awareness. Hypothesis and Commentary Psychedelic geometry is the single psychedelic effect that most captivated Josie the first time she tried psychedelics as a teenager. For her, they were a visual manifestation of all the good that psychedelics could provide, to the extent that she thought that, if she could somehow capture the geometry she experienced in high fidelity, it could positively impact others who see them. She quickly gained an intuitive feeling that geometry was a result of the cognitive experience of psychedelics bleeding into the visual cortex of her brain, a visualization of her thoughts and experience. Unbeknownst to Josie at the time, scientists had already started to piece together that there was some truth to that idea, and in multiple ways. My hypothesis on the mechanism that creates psychedelic geometry is based in two different ideas. The first is related to the actual physical structure of the processes in our brains, and the second is essentially synesthesia. 
There is a long and fascinating story to the study of geometry as a result of the physical structure of neurons, which I would love to talk about, but which may not interest all of you. I have included some links to articles and studies in the description for those who are interested. Essentially, there is good reason to suspect that the patterns of neurons firing in our visual cortex essentially resembles some geometric shapes and patterns that can be seen on psychedelics. That these patterns, which are patterns that exist in nature outside of our eyes as well, called Turing patterns, are part of what allows us to see normally without visual noise under normal conditions. However, when the visual cortex is stimulated by things that are not normal visual stimulation, by gently pressing on the eyes, looking at strobing lights at certain frequencies, or by use of certain substances, we can actually basically see those patterns of firing neurons. However, the possible patterns and shapes directly caused by the paths of neurons firing is only part of the picture. Psychedelic geometry can be unfathomably complex in a way that these phosphine-type patterns are not, which brings me to the second part of my hypothesis. Classical or serotonergic psychedelics, things like LSD, psilocybin, DMT, and mescaline, cause the different parts of our brains to become more interconnected while we trip. There are many things we don't fully understand yet about psychedelics, but that is something that has been demonstrated and verified repeatedly, and studies are able to get increasingly specific on the forms that interconnectivity can take. For example, David Nutt, a researcher studying these topics, told Nature, quote, We found that, under LSD as compared to placebo, disparate regions in the brain communicate with each other when they don't normally do so. In particular, the visual cortex increases its communication with other areas of the brain, which helps explain the vivid and complex hallucinations experienced under LSD, and the emotional flavor they can take. Synesthesia, as described before, is when one kind of stimulation is perceived as another kind of stimulation. It is understood to be caused by increased interconnectivity in different parts of the brain. To be clear, synesthesia is generally understood in a much more limited way than the experiences on psychedelics. Normally, even for people who do experience synesthesia in everyday life, the level of interconnectedness in the brain is nowhere approaching how intense it can be under the effects of psychedelics. I believe that this strong level of interconnectedness is essentially what allows experiences of psychedelic geometry to be so extreme, complex, and so immersive and connected to the rest of the cognitive experience of the trip. So, to put my hypothesis together, I think that some of the particular geometric forms that psychedelic geometry takes are caused by the shapes of neuron signals in the visual cortex. And I think that the rest of the presentation of geometry comes from interconnections in the brain, especially interconnections between the visual cortex and other parts of the brain, allowing essentially a visualization of things that are occurring in other parts of the brain. I propose that these two potential explanations work together, that the stimulation of the neurons firing in these patterns provides a structure for the signals coming from other parts of the brain to coalesce and merge into these incredibly profound visual experiences. There may be a handful of people watching this, if they stuck around long enough, who are thinking to themselves, okay, that's cool, but I don't get psychedelic geometry at all, or my experience of it has never been so complex and profound, what gives? And it is true that not everyone experiences psychedelic geometry, or some people, myself included, may be less likely to experience psychedelic geometry as a really significant part of psychedelia. Sometimes, people with aphantasia, or a lack of ability to visualize images in their minds, do not get visual effects from psychedelics, though aphantasia doesn't seem to be a perfect predictor for who will or won't get geometry based on our conversations with psychonauts. I don't have aphantasia, but I don't visualize in my head with as much clarity and detail as the average person. I do get geometry, but it feels more separate from the psychedelic experience for me than it is for some. However, the cognitive experience of psychedelics for me is immensely profound, and I don't need a visualization of it for the mental experience to be incredibly impactful. We don't know entirely why different people experience geometry and other psychedelic visuals differently, but I assume it has something to do with both the way our different bodies process these substances and the small variations in how our brains work. If you remember our polling from before, some people will get more colorful geometry on psilocybin than on LSD, which isn't the norm, but does also point to variations in our brains or our metabolisms of these substances. Just like scientists and mathematicians were able to form predictive theories about neurons in our brains based on psychedelic visuals that they experience, I firmly believe that these variations in how people experience psychedelics will ultimately point us in the direction of understanding how our brains work, and especially variations in human brains. We're just at the threshold of the science studying psychedelic subjective effects, 
and I expect many exciting discoveries on the horizon. Thank you so much for watching! If you want to learn more about the psychedelic experience in general, check out our video on the seven levels of the psychedelic experience. This video has been an exciting collaboration between the full Josie Kins team of me, Josie, and Hypnagogist with LocaVision. Check out Loka's channel for mind-blowing replications and everyone's socials linked in the description. If you want to support this channel and get access to our private Discord server along with some other perks at different tiers, including private calls with Josie, please consider supporting us on Patreon or joining our YouTube channel, which also provides Discord access. Look forward to the next video in our ongoing series on visual effects in collaboration with LocaVision. Thank you!